Hey guys, Steve here with My Comic Universe. And Bernie Lynn here from My Comic Universe. And, well, Justice League is finally here. It's right around the corner. We're excited for it. Yeah, it's the fifth movie in the DCEU. After Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, Suicide Squad, and in Batman vs. Superman. Batman vs. Superman, yeah. We've had quite a few movies leading up to this. Yeah, so let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Justice League. Yep, so for those of you that don't know, Justice League was directed by Zack Snyder and also Joss Whedon. And it's going to be released in theaters on November 17th. The film's set after the events of Batman vs. Superman. And we can see Bruce Wayne enlisting the help of Diana Prince to face a new Wonder threat. Woman. Yes, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> you better know. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. If you're interested into the, in the Justice League movie, you should know who these people are. But uh, basically, we've got Batman and Wonder Woman recruiting a team of metahumans to face a new threat. They're going to go up against Steppenwolf and his army of parademons. Steppenwolf is Darkseid's second-in-command. And, and he's his been uncle. And his uncle, yes. Yeah. And he's also been tasked with finding three mother boxes hidden on Earth. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit more about what mother boxes are? All right, so for those of you that don't know what mother boxes are, mother boxes are pretty much like living technology from the planet Apocalypse. Now, this is what is fused with Cyborg, and basically um, they can connect to all the technology. They can create boom tubes or wormholes. It's pretty cool. Exciting stuff, definitely. Yeah. Can't wait to see it uh, brought to life on the big screen. So critics have already been uh, sharing their thoughts on this film, and so far uh, the results have been mostly positive. A lot of critics have already praised Justice League for being better than Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad. So let's take a look back at the movies leading up to the Justice League, starting with Man of Steel. This film was released in 2013, and it was the first film to launch the DC Extended Universe. It was directed by Zack Snyder, who also directed Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. It was a great start to the franchise because it focused on Superman's origin stories as he struggled with his newfound abilities while trying to discover who he is and where he comes from. The film was also very successful because it didn't try to do too much in a single film. Yeah, I mean, I really liked Man of Steel. One thing I really liked about it was in the beginning how it told you some of that backstory on Krypton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And what about Batman vs Superman? Well, we had that Batman... Yeah, sure will. <laughs> With uh, Batman vs. Superman, this movie focused on Bruce Wayne's fear that Superman's actions and his powers are left unchecked. Why did you say that name? It's his mother's name! Wait, your mom's name's Martha? Yes. That's so wild, my mom's name's Martha. Oh, no way. What are the odds? Who knows? Well, this changes everything. As we saw at the end of Man of Steel when he uh, and General Zod had this huge climactic battle at the end, just causing uh, chaos and destruction all throughout the city. To say the least, yeah. So this kind of leads Batman to, uh, you know, make the decision to take Superman on in battle. And, you know, unfortunately, Batman vs. Superman, it did sacrifice some good storytelling to set up the next few films in the DC Extended Universe. And it also did try to do a little bit too much in one film, and it would have been better off as uh, two separate films. I think we should have done a standalone Batman film and a sequel to Man of Steel. Yeah, I mean, I think that Doomsday story should have definitely been a Man of Steel 2 mm -hmm. storyline. Yeah, definitely. I think I think maybe it would have made more sense to audiences if it was presented that way also. Yeah, it was, yeah it was, like you said, it was just too much in one movie. Definitely. Well, uh, fill us in on Suicide Squad. So we had Suicide Squad later that year. It came out in uh, August 2016. And this movie brought together the most dangerous incarcerated supervillains to form a special task force. And their first mission is to save the world from annihilation. The film was fun to watch, and it had a lot of potential, but I think that it still fell short. Uh, it needed a better villain. In this case, I think the Joker would have been a better choice for the I Suicide agree. Squad yeah, that would have been awesome. versus the Enchantress. I don't think that a lot of people really you know, cared too much for the Enchantress as a, as a villain or really cared about what she, what she was after in the film. Yeah, I can agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Also, I think that uh, the stakes were a little bit too high in Suicide Squad. You know, for their first mission, they could have definitely, you know, done you know, something that ending. was, <laughs> yeah, not, not necessarily something that's earth ending. You know, yeah. if, if the uh, the fate of the world wasn't at stake, I think it maybe would have played out a little bit better. Yeah. But uh, that leads us up to Wonder Woman, which came out earlier this year. Movie. Exactly. It was uh, the most recent entry in DC's extended universe, and so far it's been its most successful. Uh, it single-handedly saved the franchise, earning $820.4 million wow. at the box office, and it also has a 92% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Prior to that, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Suicide Squad averaged a 35% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. So, uh, yeah, so far, uh, yeah, Wonder Woman really is uh, taking the top prize when yeah, it comes to it. It's my favorite DCEU movie. It was mm -hmm. a great, like, kind of standalone movie. It was perfect. Yeah, it was well, great. Not perfect, but it was great, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the reason it worked so well was also because it was just focused on Wonder Woman telling her story. Mm -hmm. They didn't try to do too much. And, you know, it was just the perfect balance. Um, with the success of Wonder Woman, uh, DC did uh, decide to change their strategy with the uh, DC Extended Universe, and they've decided to downplay the shared universe altogether. Uh, moving forward, there won't be an overall storyline or interconnectivity in the DC Universe, so that's something to keep in mind uh, going forward. I kind of like this, you know, like, step away from the Marvel thing a little and mm -hmm. do their own thing. Focus on the individual movies a little, yeah, and less on you know the overall story. You know, it might give them a little more freedom. I think so too. Yeah, I think yeah, it's gonna be a good thing. Yeah, I think it really would be a good direction for them to take. You know, they really did try to force the shared universe a little bit too much, and Definitely. I think very quick. I, yeah, I think because it, it just felt so forced, and they're trying to just do it so quickly to catch up to Marvel that that's why they've been running into problems. So hopefully, this new approach will you know will change all that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for getting us caught up on the DCEU, Steve. Well, sure let's thing. talk a little bit about the comics now. Sounds good. All right. Well, the Justice League was originally conceived by Gardner Fox and it first appeared as a team in The Brave and the Bold in 1960 for issue 28. Now, the original seven members were Superman, Aquaman, Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Batman... Did I say Martian Manhunter? You didn't. That was the one and you were Martian missing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, in the movie, we're only going to see six. So it's going to be a little bit different. One of the differences is Cyborg. But yeah, we see Superman, Aquaman, Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Cyborg. So I'm kind of thinking maybe the seventh one we might see in this might be Green Lantern. That'd be really interesting. That would be yeah. Awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the origin of the Justice League. Now, there are some differences between the years, or over the years, mm -hmm. you know, but basically it takes like this alien invasion or like this, you know, earth ending, you know, catastrophe that's going to bring this team together. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. So in Justice League of America number nine in 1962, they told kind of this flashback story of the origin and it involved this kind of like competing alien warriors seeing who can take over earth first hmm. yeah it was pretty cool and then in secret origins volume 2 number 32 from 1988 this kind of updated the justice league of america number nine origin for a post-crisis continuity so this gave us a silver age black canary as a founding member and then it included the absence of Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman as founding members. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, and then... Oh, uh, one thing to note that uh, the JLA uh, Year One limited series by Mark Wade, Brian Augustine, and Barry Kitson, this uh, further explained on this secret uh, origin story. Now, with the Flashpoint story uh, basically rewriting a lot of DC's history, we got a different origin in the New 52 Justice League. This basically showed, uh, like, the parademons uh, conquering Earth or attacking Earth. Mm -hmm. So well, that's going to be a lot of similarities to the Justice League movie that we're going to see. All right, now, some of you guys might want to read a few comics or watch some animated movies to get you, you know, ready for this Justice League movie. But well, we got a few recommendations for you. Let's hear them. All right, now, number one is Justice League of America Volume 2. Now, this is from the New 52, and this kind of goes over the uh, post- Flashpoint origin of the Justice League. It's a really fun one. I really like it. I definitely recommend it. Now, the next one is The New Frontier. Now, this is uh, an Eisner, Harvey, and Schuster award-winning limited series with that uh, was written and the art was done by Darwin Cook. Now, this one was uh, re published in 2004, but it was set in 1950s and featured Golden Age superheroes. Uh, definitely a really good one. The art is amazing. I really like this one. It's got a really cool old school feel to it. It definitely sounds like something worth picking up. Yeah, definitely. And um, next is Flashpoint. Okay, if you haven't read this one, it's definitely one I recommend. It's written by Jeff Johns, and I don't really want to explain too much, but it's really cool, and it, I think a lot of the storylines uh, will have points in the new Justice League movie. Very nice. Now, for those of you that want to watch some animated movies, 
We got a few recommendations as well. So Justice League War. Now this is kind of similar to the Justice League of America for the New 52 with the pair of demons attacking and kind of an origin story. So definitely a fun one to watch. Um, and for those of you that don't have the New Frontier comic on yet, they actually made an animated movie. Nice. Yeah, so you can Very check nice. it out. It's really good. And for those of you that have not read the Flashpoint storyline, this is my favorite DC animated movie. It's called The Flashpoint Paradox. Oh, that one was so good. Yeah. Now it was really good. There's a few differences from the comic storyline, but for the most part, it's very similar. So I highly recommend checking this one out before checking out the Justice League. Now, we are extremely excited for the Justice League movie. We can't wait to see it. And we want to know if you're excited for it. Yeah, definitely leave us a comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are if you go out to see the film. And, yeah. uh, you know, just let us know what you're thinking. Now, don't forget to follow us on our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow us and uh, check out more of our content. Yeah, thanks for watching, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. See you later. See you next time. Please, please don't. Please stop that. Cherry. Please stop. Stop. Please. Please stop. So can I have all those things I asked for? Uh.